Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to Biosciences with Shatrin Sawati and I'm here with the gene therapy. I have discussed in detail in my first lecture about the uh, gene therapy and the discovery delivery system, gene delivery system, strategies of the gene therapy and many more. So today I'm going to discuss about the principle of the gene therapy and a little bit about the application of the gene therapy. So the principle of the gene therapy, vectors in gene therapy deliver DNA to the desired cell using the various carriers such as the retroviruses and adenoviruses as I have discussed uh, in my previous lecture. So must watch my first lecture about the gene therapy and this lecture about the gene therapy so each and every point will be clear upon you people efficacy uh, versus effectiveness is also crucial in gene therapy efficacy refers to a specific gene therapy uh, interventions performance under ideal but con uh, control circumstances effectiveness is the pr uh, performance of the therapy in real world condition so the process involved in gene transfer include the isolation of the gene and the vector if you are not familiar with the gene cloning, must watch my lecture about the gene cloning. So each and every point will be clear upon you people. So the isolation of the gene and vector, then digestion of the gene and vector by uh, restriction into nucleus enzyme, then the ligation of the gene and the vector. And the third, fourth one is the selection and expression of the transgenic construct. As I'm showing you here, first the cells are harvested or removed, disease uh, cells are removed from the uh, patient body. Then uh, the in the second step, uh, uh, take the uh, uh, virus, uh, maybe retrovirus uh, or any other virus, uh, first it genetically modified or altered, then uh, uh, this is used as a vector and the gene of interest uh, is inserted uh, into that vector, then this vector which carry the uh, gene of interest is mixed with the harvested cell. Now the gene from the vector is transferred into the harvested cell. Now the cells grown in the cal culture and then uh, transplanted back into the human body and in the human body it produces uh, its uh, uh, product in the form of the protein, hormones, anything else. So this is the overall principle of the gene therapy. Now, something about the nanoparticles. I will discuss in detail about the nanoparticles in my next lecture. So nanoparticles are used to overcome the various challenges that have been encountered using gene therapy. Some genes have relatively long base sequences which make it difficult, difficult for them to uh, deliver to the desired site. Moreover, the uh, nucleases in the target cells may also degrade the DNA being delivered. Must keep it in your mind. So that's why the scientists now preferring the nanoparticles to deliver the gene. Nanoparticles have been have proved uh, have been proved to be the most promising vehicle for clinical gene therapy due to their tunable size, shape, surface, and biological behavior. I will deliver a detailed lecture about the nanoparticles very soon, inshallah. Okay, now I'm going to discuss the application of the gene therapy. Although gene therapy is a promising treatment options for number of diseases, like um, inherited diseases, some types of cancers and certain viral infection, the techniques remains risky and is still under study to make uh, sure that it will be safe and effective. Gene therapy is currently being used or uh, tested for only those diseases that have no uh, other cure. Must keep it in your mind. Okay. Now the researchers are testing several approaches to gene therapy, including uh, replacing uh, mutated genes that cause a disease with a healthy copy of the gene. Second one, inactivating or knocking out a mutated gene. Third one, introducing a new gene into the body to help fight a disease. Now the gene therapy is available for the cancer, retinal disorders, cystic fibrosis, thalassemia, hemophilia, ne neurological disorders, musculoskeletal disorders, and diabetes. Uh, now I'm uh, showing something about the uh, retinal disorders are the eye disorders, like the um, uh, gene therapy available is the Lexterna, I have discussed in my first lecture. With the recent advances in the gene therapy, genes have been delivered into the eye. And the therapeutic proteins are synthesized inside the retina to rescue photoreceptors. Glial cells line derived uh, neurotrophic factors have been uh, shown to prolong the survival of the uh, dopa 
aminergic uh, neurons uh, both in the in vitro and in vivo. As you can see here, the uh, uh, gene is injected into the retina and then that gene in the retina uh, produces the desired protein and uh, prevent the disease. This is the technique uh, now use. Okay, second one is for the uh, tumor cells or the cancers. A large variety of the therapeutic genes are under investigation such as the tumor suppressor, uh, suicide anti angiogenesis, inflammatory cytokines, and microRNA genes. Recent progress concern new vectors such as the oncolytic uh, viruses and the uh, synergy be between the viral gene therapy. And neuro uh, disorders are also treated by the gene therapy. Recombinant viral vectors provide one of the most effective methods of the gene transfer into the central nervous system. The two main routes to transfer gene to the central nervous system, the indirect in vivo and the direct uh, sorry, ex vivo and the direct in vivo have their advantages and disadvantages. So uh, this is all about the principle and the application of the gene therapy. I hope so. The lecture will be clear upon you people. If you still have any question, kindly uh, write in the comment box. I will be back. Thank you. And then till then, till then Allah Hafiz.